Okay, Vicky and I were recently on vacation. We stumbled upon a mushroom farm. Uh, the guy we interviewed, Ed, was nice enough to let us interview him as he described his day-to-day -day mushroom growing business. This has got to be the easiest, cleanest way to grow shiitakes. They're tastier, and you can grow more per square foot than other methods we've tried. Unfortunately, he doesn't want to do any sales, so he's willing to share his method. He has all the business he can handle, though, so enjoy. Well, because I got it from laboratory uh, testing and everything else. Is it sawdust? Uh, the other one is sawdust. Let me grab one. If I can reach one, I can just do a bunch of them. So we're at Hidden Valley Mushroom Farm with Eddie. And with Kunsten Dells. And he's showing us what they want to grow here. You'll see it. these are made out of wood chips because sawdust is too fine and then it uh, decomposes too quickly. So they take oak, the bark oak, and they just chop a fresh oak to chips like that. So it's a little more How do you form thinner. your sticks? Oh, well, that's the pro whole process. Uh, they take those chips and they sterilize those at 240 degrees for 48 hours. So that's pretty much breaks it, down. No wonder you never breaks have any down, do, yeah. yeah, that just breaks down and sterilizes the heck out of it. And the way it's made, the other logs are like round. So usually what we have problems in the middle wouldn't get pasteurized and that's where the green will start from the bottom. If you break the old one, you could see the green mold in the middle and that would spread out. Mm -hmm. And the way these are made, they, uh, so it's all, see how it's overgrown and that's this thing's probably two months old. Wow. You know, it's any more than no. you. This is all white and what a beautiful. Neat so, idea. Yeah, and plus the, the chips are the whole thing because they don't decompose as fast. And then they make them out of like a machine. And that's why they inoculate the Do you get this uh, locally or? Oh, this is coming out of New Jersey. Um, and then they, it goes to the machine and they inoculate it and then it overgrows and they put it in the special you know? uh, special rooms and they stay for, for three to four months at a mm. certain temperature so it gets perfectly overgrown. Wow. And then they ship it to us frozen and they freeze it at 22 degrees so the middle doesn't freeze just the outside of it so that way it stays dormant for about up to two, three months if you keep it in a cooler at 32 degrees. And then we just take them out, uh, take them out day before to throw them out and then I put them in water and I soak them for about an hour and a half to two hours to get the water. Usually they weigh about three and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. So you want, uh, so they stay dormant and dry. And you, we put about a gallon of, uh, pound of water in. So they about four, four and a half pounds. And then we put them out and they are like two days old and they're already popping out. And then you got to have a more moisture around 80 to 90 degrees, you have CO2 levels about 1,000 and the temperature ideal would be 60, 65, but uh, right now it's cooler around too much heat, so it doesn't dry out, so I keep it around 55 here. So all it does is slow us down, instead of setting the temperature around 55, I get maybe 14 right now, so it's still But it's, it's still worth it. I yeah, mean, and we just go one crop and we take it out, you see that wood boiler, they go in, we burn it and heat the building with it because it's all wood chips, so it burns nice and clean. So it's everything gets so you use it to heat stuff I where the heat it's done. House wow. and stuff with it. Wow. Plus, we do all come for the night, but otherwise, for the garden, it's perfect. It's so broken down. Uh, the thing, even if you mix it with the garden, because it's all organic, uh -huh. it's still got a lot of uh, potassium and nitrogen in it. So if, if if you throw it in, it gets wet, it breaks down to pieces, you mix it in with your soil and you got a lot of nutrition for your vegetables too. Mm. So you say 90% of it is on the first Well, if run. you do everything right, you should get the 90%. Because second break, you'd have to take them off, clean them off, you've got to rest them for another probably a week back in the cooler or something cool, so they will regenerate inside because when you pull them out, they, you break the whole system mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And then you have to re-soak them usually for 12 hours to get all the moisture back. And it takes one or two, three weeks just to get a second break. Oh, and so usually it's not worth get a quarter pound, maybe on two breaks, half a pound. It just you would have to have, especially if you got the overhead with the heating and air conditioning, it's just not worth keeping. So, a lot of people I said this black today grow it for four or five months and they will get a little mushroom here, one big one. Yeah, for but, you know, they put it in the garage in the basement, they don't care. But I have to move like 500 at least, at least 500 a week. So, 
Now, do you mostly sell the shiitakes as whole mushrooms, or do you mostly sell these as a project for somebody to do? No, we sell uh, two wholesalers, then we go to a couple stores and some restaurants. Now, how many we pounds? Sell retail and, uh, one, one and a half. How many pounds of mushrooms do you get off one of these logs before it's done? I have about 1.3 on the first crop. 1.3 pounds One and of a mushrooms. quarter, it's okay. good. Anything over a pound is good. And um, I get 1.2. I had 1.4 last week. So, on average, you're going to get a lot that you're going to get almost two pounds, you're going to get one that's under pound, but on average, weekly, the more I look at it, so it's one point. How do you inoculate them to start with? No. Oh, that's already done. Before oh, it's already done before yeah, you get he, the yeah, sticks? It's all in the lab. He buys this for th $3, all and all in then they inoculate three spots right. here, and then they soak them. Okay. Yeah. So they're already we set up to go. It. We had the whole building, one room for the sterilization, inoculation, and it That's takes three, four months, work. and you have to have, especially in Wisconsin. So this is all. would be easier. You know, you got those rooms got to be so controlled with steam mm -hmm. and temperature. That's overhead is unbelievable. So, so and the materials is, on top of it too. You know. Yeah. So this is a lot more turnkey. You can get the product and let it sit out. Yeah, right now I just, uh, I just. Uh, Concentrate on growing part of it. That's all. Mm -hmm. Just like shiitake logs, everything else I mm -hmm. get out of Pennsylvania. Or be not today, and then you call it what you want, and it saves me time. And I get those shit in the pellets and stick in my cooler so they don't grow, and then they stick them off in the garden. Where do you get your? Bags? I think I get it from a lamp and spawn company out of Pennsylvania at Kennett Square. They make uh, now the, all kinds of oyster, yellow, blue. Uh, gray, uh, pink, like you say, they got lion's mane, uh, mane, maitake, you name it, they got it. This they is just amazing. specialize, they don't grow anything, they just specialize, they like laboratories. Mm -hmm. All they do is make spawn and mixes and stuff like that. And how much do you sell your shiitake for? On average, uh, wholesale goes anywhere between four or five and uh, retail about seven, eight. And at the markets or anything, they go 12, 13 in the summertime. Good, 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 good. Yeah, so on average, you probably average five dollars a pound. He was showing me how how much better. How different those those are, and shelf life is about three weeks on these one, this much. Tell me again, so he can hear how how the. I mean, it's nice and thick, yeah. and meaty mushroom. For yeah, sandwich. first crop is usually smaller. The first row is just they just coming up. This is almost done. Today and tomorrow they'll be all gone. I'm replacing these two shelves. Wow. So how many like two shelves a week usually? Okay. How many crops do you get off one of these logs? You just get I one do crop. All. You can get two, three, but like I explained before, it's not worth it for me because for the half another half a pound, they will take up another month of my space. Okay. So he just head, does it one time. Uh, okay. So the whole trick is keep everything clean, do everything perfect, so you get the maximum on the first crop. Mm -hmm. Mm. You have to wash this stuff down periodically at all, or just when, when the rack is well, empty? Well, these eggs I just put up last year, like most of the people they grow on the wire racks and stuff, which is very hard to clean and stuff, so I was trying to come up with the idea, as I've seen these made out of metal, but then they rust and they drip on the thing, they you have to rust, be painted, yeah. we had on metal before, so I went to the surplus store and got all this high pressure piping. It's all PVC, right? PVC, yeah. and I drilled it, I measured it, and mm -hmm. I designed the for, you know, I put 250 on each, so that's my pellet fits two shelves. Huh, yeah. And I just, there's no nails, no glue, nothing. These are just drilled in. I know, it's yeah, and, and it's perfect. Yeah. And another thing about these, great, you know, like I'm gonna put these here. I just wipe them off with some chlorine and stuff after each crop. And mm -hmm. thing is, the other ones, they only grow from three sides, otherwise they would grow into the, uh, into the, the wire. And with this, I get probably quarter pound more because of this, because they will grow from the barrel. Oh, yeah. See, oh, there is no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so wow. there is no obstructions. I can all mist it from the barrel, they get the airflow, so a lot of it will come up at the barrel. So they get maximum space Just for, for the these, it adds up quarter pound of the log, and hmm. yeah, you can see them right there. <laughs> Sometimes you get more on the barrel than the top, depends oh. on the bedding. You know, we try standing them up, all kinds of things, and this is like right now. 25 years been doing this, huh? Wow. Yeah, with these logs, we did for about three years now. We did everything. We started with white and put the bellows for 15 years because nobody had heard about this. So, last 10 years, everybody, the interest in exotic mushrooms really way up there. The medical yeah, reasons. I get kids from universities over here with UW visits. Hmm. And 
You study it and then you sort You get any grants for this? <laughs> no, I wish. No, I'm on my own. People that get grants they got their hands in the cookie jar for years, you know. That's you gotta be part of the elite. The club, uh, yeah. Really? People that don't do anything, just get the grants and spend it within two years, they get another half a million. Huh. They go and talk a lot, drink a lot of water. Um, I went to those meetings. And it's not worth that's it. That's what it is. Waste of taxpayers' money because none of them can really make it without a grant. Yeah, these are the new, new crop that's coming up. So. It's all the Asian mushroom. It's all the. So same. how many days? How many days does it take to get to this point here? Like, if I keep the temperature from uh, 60, 65, you're talking 7, 10 days for picking. Right now, temperatures here around 55, so that's about. 12 to 14 days for me right now because everything okay. slows down but the quality of the mushrooms nicer because they go slower and bigger they are so, and it's mm. heavy and the uh, winter time they go faster i got air conditioning but it's hard to keep it here uh, winter time's faster because the naturally cool well cool slows slower, it down you know, slower, it slows okay. it down yeah. so spring in the fall is the best you don't need anything open up the vents and keep the co2 levels at the same we would have just the opposite problem in florida where it gets so hot down there the summertime, oh, right? Oh, dig a hole and go underground, and I know somebody that did that. They took uh, semi trailers, wow. on aluminum okay. insulated, yeah. dig mm -hmm. the hole, drop it in, put the ground over the thing. Okay, just then the it bags, stays cool. Walk yep. way in, mm -hmm. and it stays cool. You don't have to heat much. You know, mm. Beautiful, like ten of them. They put the door from next to each other. It's all oh, like ground. a tunnel, wow. huh? Yeah, huh. it's like all cool. you have to do is go ten feet if yep. you can. If there's mm -hmm. no water that uh, deep. Mm. <laughs> you got all that, so no, no over that much. So. Yeah, these will start picking probably go to it already tomorrow. But we go turn them out, get these out, that's open up, that's almost ready. And then the other ones will start coming. So all picking is probably three, four days. So we go in the cycle and stuff. How much you probably do most of it yourself then? Yeah, because we got like a spread business we also do resales on white, creamy, portobello, every other mushrooms. I deal with the companies out east. I get a semi truck coming twice a week here. Because it's hard to, hard to go to retail to any restaurant and store and just sell shiitake. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants the whole line of it. Mm -hmm. So whatever we grow and the rest of it, I get it from other small farms here. Otherwise, I ship it and we are licensed to resale. That way, restaurant wants five varieties, they get five varieties. Nobody wants to pick up a phone and call five different people for yeah, five right, different right. strains. So, especially with the store, they get the whole line. So. Now, what would happen if you grew oyster mushrooms with these? Do I do. Uh, I'm just uh, finished up all my bags and I'm kind of a little so cold and I didn't want to bother with it. So I got some of it and this week I'm getting all the new bags and lion's mane and you can see we've got some. My wife's got an event with the church in local town and we had a huge event. Um, so I'm going to lion's mane. Hopefully they'll be ready by Saturday. Yeah, I do lots of oysters. These couple years ago, I grew at least uh, 500 pounds a week of lions. Wow. wow! But I do have to ship it to Chicago because they're, they're popular, the Asian population. So they're just every week, we we'll, they would order like 500 pounds every week. We just wow. dump a van and go around. We got tired of driving <laughs> 200 miles. Oh man! Oh well, it's close enough. You drive it yeah, down, you right ship it, right? Couple, uh, one uh, wholesaler from Milwaukee, they're actually in town seven days, six days a week, so they stop by twice a week and just pick out. So huh. They buy about 70% of our wow. shiitakes right now. Nice. And, and they pick up, so and it's all bulk. That's a bonus. Boxes. Don't have to ship or yeah. drive or anything, right? And then we go three times to Madison mm -hmm. and some smaller places up there. But and where do you get your support? That, these are brown, all mm -hmm. popping up, because these are like second. Third. Yeah, these are come from Pennsylvania. You see the second crop is sure. What what was the name of the, the company? Uh, Lambert's Spawn Company. Actually French company. Lambert's? Lambert's Spawn, yeah. It's one of the probably biggest spawn company in the world that supplies with the hmm. mushroom squads. They got all the patents for the squads and stuff. Oh they do. So it's yeah, not there's only yeah. a few companies, Silver, Lambert's, uh, the Lion from UK and what's the Silver Seven? There's one more in the U.S. based. They, they pretty much. There's smaller companies, but they gotta buy patent from them. 
So do you, do you use your own sawdust then for this? No, I get it all inoculated just like this. You know, it comes they just do like all that. the work. Mm -hmm. they, nice, nice. Yeah. You just store it and harvest Yeah, because it, right? we used to mm -hmm. do it and uh, there is no material in Wisconsin for it. Uh, you know, pit moss, we had to ship it from Quebec, Canada. So you got to ship uh, all your materials a, in? This is, more, this is a pit moss. Uh, Cotton seed and wheat straw. Wheat straw we don't have except corn in Wisconsin. So wheat straw I had to get it from Kentucky. Cotton seed I had to ship by truckloads from North Carolina. And then you have to store it because you can't just buy a bale. You have to get a semi truck to get a price mm -hmm. on it. And you know, that. But 10, 15 years ago there was no other choice. So those companies opened up these mixes where the material is because that's not cheaper to just get it. Because you almost have to double material what's in the bag. So. So it's pretty easy to grow these days, except if you know how. Mm -hmm. When we started, there wasn't fun growing, I tell you. It was fun. Not too many people survived, because you had to do everything yourself. Well, but what got you into it 25 years ago? I don't know, crazy ideas, something to do. Uh -huh. I used to live in Chicago, got tired of it, we had this place, and doing something that nobody does. So hmm. do you collect any of your shiitakes for at all? Like to collect it? Not yeah. really, no. no. It's just not uh, worth doing. And these, especially these, like, uh, depends on the, on the strain. These don't release spores unless they overgrow and, you know, just like portobellos are there. Yeah, when, they, when they uh, mature. Up. So I don't let them go to that point because, you know, with the other ones, they would release some early, the ones that you were mentioning. With those the other logs and God, that spores were like every morning I would have to blow the fence. People would come in here wow. and hide because millions of spores. It was like a foggy of mm -hmm. if I, mm -hmm. in the winter time especially I had to close the vents down because they would release so many spores. And these are that's the reason I like them so much because they don't release any spores until if I forget one to pick and they will go overgrow, you can see the white <laughs> spores around mm -hmm. in the morning. Right? If they are like this stage, they don't really see spores yet, so which is good. That is freaking incredible. Do you have any other grow rooms for any of the other Well, or? right now this is all I'm using. Mean? Yeah, this is, I don't want to do too much. It's family business and it's organic, so we get inspected and that. My kids just went to college. Two of them they were helping me a few months ago, so they only come in once in a while. So it's my son, my wife, and I got part-time worker that we do. So that's all we can handle. Once I would go bigger, I get higher people, then I go into a different bracket and business bracket and all this and start working. Mm. Keep it smaller, you get quality, better quality. This is quality is incredible. This is the cleanest grow room I've yeah, ever Yeah, a lot of it actually goes to Chicago. I got that uh, company out of Milwaukee, they will pick up for me. They use some of it in Wisconsin. And they ship quite a bit to Chicago right now. Nice. What a what a beautiful room. Now, do you use the, the spent logs to help heat this place? Yeah. I pretty that's, much that's use some the, key. the garden. The rest of it I just burn in my wood boiler outside. And mm. Burn so nicely. We dry them over the summer. Otherwise, now we just throw it on top of the wood. It will dry out and slowly burn. Now, when you put the shiitake logs in the, in the garden, do they pop up occasionally? They will sometimes, yeah. And if shade, if it's a shady spot. Oyster will, oh God, this brown ones. Uh -huh. I sell it to people, they have uh, a garden, and they call me in a few days like, it's full of mushrooms, uh -huh. can I eat them? I said, yeah, just make sure there's no bugs in them. Pick them early, because once they get little bigger, bugs will get in so fast. Yeah. Oh, bugs, yeah. I love the snails. I love them, yeah. yeah. Mm. So when you, when you pick these, you just pop the shiitake off, yeah, you know, twisting? Yeah, just twist them right out. And, they sell them like that, and a couple places they just want kept, so we cut it off. That is the hardiest, firmest shiitake. I, I like that. Yeah, the quality is unbelievable. Yeah. A lot of it to do, the trick is not over pin it. Especially in the summer, if you get too many pins, you get a lot of small ones, and it's really the over pin and get. Like, you want. I delay what anyway from 20 to 30 mushrooms on a log. That's what they log. It's designed mm. that way you get nice big around the mushroom. Is there any way to make them do these big caps like this instead of the pins? Like if you see a whole bunch of pins, do you rub them off and let them go? Yeah, I, I leave some because I got some places that want them big ones. So, And they don't all pin out at the same time. So, you know, we Makes it easier for harvesting, right? These are like behind. So like harvest takes about three, four, five days sometimes. Mm -hmm. 
So it's kind of a playing around with it, like these you can see. These are already pinned out because they're turning it cooler, but then the little ones will pop up. So these will be faster, and then you get the other behind it. And it's just called an Asian shiitake? Well, I don't really name of it, but the strain came out of uh, Asia for these. They get a lot of shiitake uh, in Europe and Asia these days. Really? Probably right. more than white ones from what I hear from other girls. Mm. There are so many health benefits from it, that's why. And the lion's mane. The lion's mane, yeah, with the brain and all this. Uh, so we don't get Alzheimer's and our yeah, brain this, functions yeah, better? Yeah, we don't start forgetting things. This got a lot to do with the blood thinning, heart, stuff like that, for the high blood pressure. So they make now tea and pills out of it and all kinds of stuff. So. And I was just reading that if you lay them out in the sun, it really absorbs the vitamin D and... Yeah, we dehydrate nine. some of it, and actually in summer I dehydrate on the, on the, on the outside, in the sun, mm -hmm. and then we, I come and we sell them dry. Sell that way too. Mm -hmm. so. And you like the taste of these better? Yeah, they got a lot better taste. It's more uh, what's the flavor to it. Even though the stem, some of the smaller one, even stem is edible. You can touch it, see how nice and soft it is. If you chop it mm -hmm. up for oh, sauce. Oh yeah, it's so. not The other one, hard. it's like so woodsy, you can even chew on that. Uh, the other. Uh, there's a lot of strains uh, of shiitake as well. Yeah. For different parts of the country, there's different ones in Florida, different ones in Minnesota. They will grow, depends on it. Because a lot of these are grown on, people still grow on a regular woodlock, so they have to have a different. These are the absolute healthiest shiitake I have ever seen. I am very, very impressed. I love it. I can see why, why you've done it all these years. It just excites me. Just as soon as I started getting into mushrooms, it's like, didn't I go overboard? Mm -hmm. it's like, a lot of experimenting. Before I had three, four rooms, and now I can go same amount out of this half of the room where I used to be. Mm -hmm. I average about six, seven hundred pounds a week out of these shells right now. I can wow. go easily. Wow. Summertime, I can go easy thousand pounds in here. Huh. Just on this side. I'm thinking now I'm trying to decide because I'm talking to my own sailor. If I do go more oysters, open up second room, I just put shells and go one sheet like you. Mm. We might have to just do all shiitake in one room and we got four growing girls, so move our oyster and other stuff into a second room. But right now this is the only grow room you have That's open? That's um, yeah, this is, a, they always been our growing room because the other rooms were more like for pasteurization, spawn run and stuff like that. And that's incredibly hard work, I just to keep everything sterile. I'm learning and struggling and it's tough. So I admire it. This the only is nuisance is fruit flies in the summertime, no yes. matter what you do, it's hard to keep them. But they really don't do damage uh, with this type of mushrooms, I don't know why. They're just nuisance when they get underneath. But a lot of it comes out of the oyster bags. Because they're much softer, because I Because of the straw and stuff, so they will hurt you a little bit. Hmm. Oh, thank you so How much. How long does it take to uh, dry the mushrooms when you put them out in the sun? Oh, it depends. Usually one day. One day, yeah. Uh, five. Cut them nicely or smaller caps, I put in the morning and put on the top and I got actually big mirrors I put underneath and all of this so it gets the reflection from both sides. A mm. few hours I turn them over and all they are. God, that's great. And then you can package them up and they're dry and they'll, yeah. how long do they? Oh, you can hear them more. I vacuum pack them in the Oh, a year bags more. And, uh, mm. We don't do much of it, our excess, because you're always going to have some excess here and there so we don't waste it. We don't do as many markets as we used to because we are so busy right now with uh, just reselling and stuff. So. Would you like to um, create a, a sale of the, the logs or do you want to just fo mainly focus on selling logs? I did that for a while because once that company came on the market, I kind of had, they went to me because I get shipping out of East Coast like twice a week here. So I'll start selling to a couple of places close by. There's not too many mushroom farms here, so. So, so they would buy it from me, so I would distribute from, for them. But uh, so more and more company coming up with these ideas now. They're producing different mixes and stuff now. So. And the shipping is outrageous, isn't it? Well, for, yeah, because you gotta find a company that's not, you know, especially if you don't ship like pellet or two, then it's hard to mm -hmm. coordinate with somebody. But I got it made because I've been dealing with this company for 20 years, Bashiani Foods out of Pennsylvania. They 
supply pretty much Minnesota market, so their truck goes by me every day, so they uh-huh. stop by every Tuesday and every Thursday by me over here, so I buy all my supplies, everything to them. Uh-huh. So anything I want to ship, I ship to them. That's kind of neat, they check a truck. On the way, about 1.30 today. 1.30, okay. And I gotta take these out right now, so give me a minute. I can help you if you want. Hold on, I gotta check, I write my time, I keep forgetting. I gotta so it's wood chips they don't use any kind of binder to bind these no that's all all held by the mycelium the senior will you know, overgrow and just hold the other thing. So we put them like this. Belly up. Belly buttons up. Like belly buttons up. Yeah, like the bottom ones. And then I put seven and seven. You kind of don't put anything here because they have a heat blower. So you be careful so they don't break it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's how they look. This one's got more on the bottom, actually, than the top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I put it this way because you got the new ones coming up. So. So you put that one upside down then? Uh, no, because that's what the new 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 ones will pop up this way. Like that. Oh, look at all the pins. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, just put six rows on this shelf. I have my own system. Oh, okay. Right now, uh, see the hole is from the heating here, so. I usually don't do anything because they all dry here, so I just do this side and then... Yeah, they should weigh, I don't weigh, even weigh them anymore. They should weigh about 4.3 to... How often does the mister go off? Oh, I do it everything by hand, because it depends what stage you gotta list them differently, so... It's hard to do... If you miss the whole thing, it's like... Okay. So is, your, is your misting water filtered at all, or is it just regular water? Just the regular water. Well water. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about uh, watering them with the silly water because of all the chemicals and stuff. So yeah. Most of the farms that are growing, they always use the, trying to have a well water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, plants seem to like well water a lot better than city water. Yeah, that's what I did. And these are made also, they use uh, water out of the streams. So it's all natural and chemicals and everything. And it probably has like, nitrogen and nutrients, yeah, right? Yeah, it's all uh, natural quality. Wow, oh, that's it's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, I put these out yesterday, look at it. Because they already came down, that's from yesterday, so it's all. Yeah, these other things. Um, so how long do you soak these for? 48 hours? No, hour and a half. Hour and a half? Usually hour and a half. Depends wow. on the logs. That's they pretty quick. They hold it and dry it. I lay them before. So sometimes I do it like in a dry time, summertime, I will go two hours. So I'm guessing they suck the water in pretty quick then, if it's only an hour and a half. Uh, yeah, they absorb. And this one just from here to here. Oh, wow. Jesus. And this water is cold. Yeah, that's what they call shocking. You gotta really shock them with cold water. So what, is it almost, it feels like it's almost freezing. Yeah, well my water is about straight from the well, about 50, 60 degrees, 50 in the water kind of. These I'll probably pick about seven days. Seven days? And you don't even have to heat this, that's wonderful. No. So I do usually, Perfect. Usually, <laughs> usually two shelves a day, sometimes three. Mm. And just go down the row and then pick and go down again? Yep, and I move it out so every day we pick fresh. Yep. So I see this one is almost flat. Yeah, How this close is ready is that to pick. How yeah. close is that to spawn? Oh yeah, that would probably start spawning. If I don't pick it tomorrow, that would probably start. It might even, I don't see anything yet. Usually How can you tell if it's ready to release its spores? Can you see that? Yeah. 
Well, it's about ready, but I didn't release any because if you leave it and come tomorrow, you you would see the little flowery, like white. They, these it. ones don't really yeah, shoot it out. Yeah, once they start opening up, they, you will see the spores. They will drop on the log. I just got to see my first one. We we went at night because we have to pick slugs at night, and it was my first one, and I was so excited. <laughs> and you get to see it every day. If, are you used to? It's neat. Yeah, if you can get your hands on these logs, then you can really grow some mushrooms. So I well, then we, then then we the need people. a bigger place to keep them and I do that stuff. I saw one guy in uh, Chicago comes in the summertime all the time, and he took the whole case. Oh, yeah. And he put everything out at the same time and took some bags, and then he calls me a week later, like, what else I can do with this? Because all my black, my neighbors been eating mushrooms for a week. <laughs> I, got the, I got them the baskets, I got them the cooler, uh -huh, uh -huh. and you can dry some or pick up some. <laughs> Why did you put all of it out? Because like, once you get it, I tell people to take it more. Wrap it in a towel, stick it in the fridge, you can keep it there for a month, and then soak it when you're ready. And so one at a time, I got a friend of mine out of Wyoming, that comes two, three times got a home here too, so he will take few cases because they don't have any uh, anybody growing up there, so he does it too by himself. Huh. Now what were you doing with the logs outside? The ones you're cutting with saw. Well, that's that just firewood or something? Or? Uh, what? The logs you were cutting with the chainsaw? Oh, that's by uh, oak logs. Uh, for the night, these will burn nicely during the day, but uh, they sh Quick. Burns up too yeah. quick, yeah. And then, so I got old clogs that we put for the night and on the bottom, and then we throw these on top. So you got the charcoal underneath. Now, what so that's my exercise. Yes, it's it is some great. exercise too. I run chainsaw. Stay in shape with the chainsaw. Mm -hmm. What else do you grow in your gardens? Do you uh, sell any other gardens? No, stuff? we just do it for ourselves. We got all these grapes, uh, but everything's just out of shiitake and oyster. You can go back in your garden, you know. We got a strike everything here and that's uh packaging and big cooler and we got a couple of stores in medicine so we two times a week can go and this is why I take uh, in medicine they make uh, shiitake sandwiches out of them. Oh. So that's as big as portobello. It's very hard to get on that side. Wow, so, so healthy. Also them, them when we take this whole cap and look how thick it is. And now so it's you, solid. So you dip it in the egg and the flour and do it in like a pork chop. Oh, now make it crispy. What makes the mushroom do this instead of be round? Ah, uh, this one was growing probably a little bit in a wet spot and, uh, so and that's too much moisture. dark. A lot, lot, lot of it is influenced by, by light, air movement. Actually, my friend was so plugged up, I didn't realize the one that was blowing underneath the shelf. got so plugged up and hardly was blowing, I, I could see the thing. So you don't get the air movement, it would look kind of funny. So we do all kinds of stuff. Why the blankets on these? I don't want them to dry out. To okay. keep them moist, yeah. yeah. Okay. So they're the cold and I want to keep them okay. there. Otherwise they will dry. We'll keep the CO2 levels. Once they get in, they'll start moving out. Oh, yeah, and they might even start growing, yeah. right? Yeah, we'll go to the bottom. Yeah, we'll go to the bottom. Are you still as excited as you used to be? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's really good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So. And, and that's supposed to be the way with the oysters too. Do they come oh, yeah. back the next year? Yeah, the problem is with the oysters that, uh, uh, especially with oysters, that uh, you gotta pick them real quick, otherwise the bugs get on them. So the other ones it doesn't, like maitake and stuff, bugs won't touch them. But, uh, Do any of them overwinter? Uh, no, I don't see much. You know, in the spring they will start popping up here and there. Wow. Free extras. Yeah, we got all these grapes we put in for a shade, and uh, I've been putting uh, oysters around it. God, they go all the way up to the roof. It's so many, I just leave it for the birds. Mm. You open the window and pick out grapes. <laughs> mm. I saw that. Um, <laughs> and tomatoes, uh, because I put all those mixes from this, it's so much nitrogen, all those nutrients in uh -huh. God, my, if I put the sticks and trim them, they will go like all the way up to the roof, 10 feet high, the tomatoes. Mm. And tomatoes get that big. So. A lot of that's too, uh, I didn't even know some of this stuff. I know that is, but uh, last year, a couple years ago, I guess. One guy called me, he's got a farm uh, about 45 minutes in Plain, Wisconsin. He grows uh, peppers, hot peppers, mild peppers. And he always had problems with blotch and all kinds of diseases at different times of the year. Uh -huh. And he read something that mushroom is will control it. So he came by and started taking my shiitake logs and oyster logs with the mycelium still in it yeah. after I'm done. And he started mixing it in. He said all the diseases disappeared. He had disease free peppers in a sense, no blood, nothing, tomatoes, mm. nothing. Because the mycelium will start growing and it lives on a, on and a it disease and that, it, yes. yeah, and it clears all the soil pretty much. I, I it's like worms that. and uh, mushrooms will do the same. Uh-huh. They, they're they're just amazing, dish, yeah. so. So I've been using garden for years and my neighbors sometimes come and say, oh, I got blood, all my leaves are falling off. And how come these are all green? I said, try this. That will just... Uh, it, it mm. really works for blight. Yeah. I, we did it for blight for tomatoes and it was so bad and the mycelium just eats it all. It's just incredible and nutritious too because they grow bigger and healthier. Yeah. You're absolutely right. What kind of grapes are those? Oh, I got about four different kinds in here. Five, I got five of them. They're all about that big. Six years ago, I think about that's how fast they grew. It's like unbelievable. <laughs> you should see it. You can even see this. The only thing all that goes is the leaves and grapes and grapes. Nice and shady for the summer. Yeah. You can't really pop these and any glass of this garbage and just help yourself. That's where I just leave all my birds and I'll come in. What a beautiful place. Thank you so much for showing us. Oh, very wow. great. Yeah, thank you very much. Like, Appreciate these it. are most of our customers that need to come to medicine. There's a, yeah, uh, uh, a lot of people coming to vacation and they also stop by. Last year we had so many groups uh, and there's so much interest in mushrooms I couldn't believe. So it's really yeah. exploding all of a sudden. Yeah. It's just exploding. From schools too we had like all the way from my, uh, actually this year I had two groups from Iowa University and some kids and uh, mm. some professors and they want to start growing in the workshop and in fact they were going to gonna come up and get some rocks for me just for the students for learning. And that's a great extra side. I had UW from Madison for a couple of years coming up here. They were uh, studying the spotted fly. There was uh, the infesting all the uh, burying farmers in Wisconsin. They were trying to how they survive. So they were putting traps in my growing rooms outside trying to figure out how they survive the winter because they are destroying the strawberries and everything else in our state. Have you read about the cordyceps mushroom? No, it's not. It, it, it's a fungus and the ant eats the fungus and carries it back and it zombifies them and they climb up a tree and they clamp onto the tree and mm -hmm. die and then the mushroom grows out of its head. Mm -hmm. and the cordyceps mushroom, but it's supposed to also be really nutritional and they sell that now as a medicinal mushroom. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just, they have one for termites and Paul Stamets that wrote the book mm -hmm. on mushrooms. I got some of his books. When yeah. I started, that's the only play access I had was uh, the That was the only information you could get. Yeah, and the uh, Mushroom Institute, I don't know, they still operate, but before there was a... Now with the internet, you can find pretty much mm -hmm. anything anywhere. Be careful who the information coming from, because a lot of it is not really legit. Yeah. You see all these people selling these logs for like $20, $25 a log. Uh-huh, yeah. And if you do everything right, you get pounds of half of it. So, 
Nu de urmă, că încă nu cred și dumii de la care să fără. O fac rău. Fără ca în mașină. Ai de urmă să încălzi în urmă? Da, am făcut. Am făcut lines, și tăcut. Pentru că, cum se poate, am făcut lucruri de urmă. Și am făcut lucruri de urmă. Deci am făcut lucruri de urmă. Am făcut lucruri de urmă. Și 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 am făcut lucruri de urmă. And they would come out. I heard it in the corner of my growing group the whole summer they were coming out. They overgrew the tree and they were going with the cat's wood because I put like little Sandwiches stamps. The and then when I drilled the holes, they started coming out. So oh. also, now the people were taking pictures because they were coming out. Mm. I love that. I, and I don't know if your lion's mate does that. I get the long icicles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so beautiful. And then I get one and I'll do curlies. Yeah. All the, the things will curl and the next one will be straight. Uh, did you ever try one going on top of it? I took one and one time uh, and I took a piece of PVC pipe about a two inch, about three inch high and I opened up the bag from the top and put that PVC pipe, put a rubber band around, that's the only access. That thing grew, was that big. I mean like three pounds, but it's like, it looked wow. like an atomic bomb on top of it and kids were taking pictures, taking to school, but that was unbelievable, that big, that must have been like that big balloon because yes. all the stuff went up. But the taste of it because it was for some reason going up in here. It wasn't as dense. There was uh -huh. a little bit of taste to it. Oh. But the, for the looks of it, it was Yeah, it's, it's incredible. <coughs> I'll have to try that. I, I poke so many because I figure I get more that way, but you're right. I usually do about four cuts, maybe sometimes six. One across, one on the bottom, so they're not on the same, like these. So I will get about on first scrap. Each pound is over half a pound, so I get over a pound, pound and a half on the first scrap out of the bag. Okay. And the second one, I got new thing that they'll get a little smaller. And, uh, like I, said, I don't grow much. I do a little bit in the summertime because I get some people coming, so they're interested in it. But, mm. Mark is not there for it yet. I would have to go all the way to Chicago. Right? There is. There's not a lot. Is that off now? Okay. It's a lot. Oh. Thank you again. You probably have to get back to work. Well, it's kind of a Tuesdays are kind of off days. It's the slowest day of the week. So my son's not here yet. My wife went to town take care of business, and we got truck going around one thirty. So after that, we got some work to do. Mm. Other than that, I want to chop some wood and soak some logs and pick some mushrooms today. You pick some? Yeah, I'll be picking some in the afternoon. I got maybe thirty, forty pounds today. That's all. We pick over 700 pounds last week, so... Wow! I got 700 pounds week. a week? Wow! Yeah, 713 last week. I average a little over 600, I guess. This week will be a little slower, maybe 500 pounds if I get the obit. So you never save your wood cuttings and do it that way at all anymore, huh? Uh, what? You never save the wood from your oak and the sawdust and grow it that way anymore? You know? No, it's not... Uh, it's uh, not worth it, not worth it how easy yeah. that is. If I had even time, I got so many oak stumps and trees, I should probably put some spent logs underneath and, and they will overgrow. I give it away to people, these old spent logs, because everybody's got their own little bit shed, uh, woods and stuff. Yeah, they will take the some old, old decaying logs, uh -huh. they will dig out and stick the whole logs under, break it down because mycelium is still there. And that mycelium will take off and over a year or two they will overgrow the stumps and they will grow. Wow. Because it's the same thing as you buying these plugs and everything. This and they will just overgrow because mycelium is still here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can just dry it and keep it for years and no one disappear or freeze it. It will last for years and years, yeah. huh? All right. Right now, just too much work just to grow it and ship it out. So. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're good.